ExxonMobil publishes a second list of contractors. Government responds to hike in fuel prices. City Council extends a cleanup campaign. And in court, a businessman released on bail for causing death by dangerous driving. Those are the top headlines for Friday, June 8. Good evening. I'm Ashley Scotland with the news in details. A giant ExxonMobil is making good on their promise to ensure local businesses and individuals are included in their operations in keeping with the draft local content policy. Here is more from Nikhil Jondo. ExxonMobil Guyana says it wishes to clarify uncertainties regarding the list published by the government days ago. The oil giant made it clear that all the companies or individuals listed by the government would have provided a product or a service to either them or one of their main contractors. Those products or services would have supported the company's operations in Guyana. The first list that was published by the government had more than 200 plus companies and individuals as suppliers for the first quarter of 2018. Companies will come, companies will go, and they will say what their interpretation is. But it is for us as a people to determine what local content is. We have actually released the contracts and we believe that that level of transparency that level of accountability is unheard of in Guyana previously. The government is still said to be working on the draft local content policy. The policy will give preference to Guyanese where capability exists and develop competencies where the demand support requires local investment among others. The policy will be brought to the National Assembly for debate at a future date. We will eventually come to that point when we have the legislation debated in the National Assembly. And that is what I would like to say. I would not want to speculate as to, you know, what is an interpretation to be given to a fact. That is to say a fact of the matter is that the publication has been made about companies that are benefiting and so on from the investment that is taking place here in Guyana. And beyond that, I would not wish to venture. Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. The government will be making a pronouncement on the hike in fuel prices following the Ministry of Business's engagement with the United Minibus Union. Yanis Abrams with the details. Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson says the Ministry of Business has been handed the responsibility to engage the United Minibus Union. The engagement will pave the way for addressing existing concerns faced by motorists as a result of the hike in fuel prices. The government minister of business is engaging uh, the various minibuses association and we've asked them to document, I mean, because obviously document um, their, their, um, all their issues so we, so we can address it um, holistically. So that's there, that is the point where we are at in the moment. Uh, we are engaging them. No decision has been made um, as yet on the on the final um, what we shall do. During the much anticipated engagement, a fruitful negotiation will be concluded in the best interest of motorists and passengers. Um, I mean, if there's if, if gas prices will be moved, um, if what are the issues? We don't want to. We want to look at it holistically, and that's what we're doing in the moment. So engaging them. This followed protest actions by drivers who are peeved by the increased prices. The prices of fuel is said to have hiked as a result of the impact of hurricanes on the oil industry. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. More news to look ahead, do stay tuned. Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations. In Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At 
Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. Quality for you are the Slim Jet because you deserve the best. The Slim Jet introducing the latest for lifters. This one makes pressure in the abdomen and as the butt. You can wear any kind of cloth and nobody knows if you have something under. We also introduce the for lifter with hooks. It's easy for you to wear and you can you can adjust in different positions. Only at the Slim Jet in City Mall or Gibbland Mall. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing! I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. Yeah. No, no. I'll make something for us. So where are the spices? Oh, in the drawer. Wow, all these spices! Cardamom? Cumin seeds? Yes. in these new line of spices. And they even have smoked paprika. That and many more, all in convenient size bottles. Here's what's happening on Waterloo Street at John Lewis Styles during the month of June. Shop for Father's Day and you could win an all-inclusive trip for two to Arrowpoint Nature Resort. Buy any men's suit and get a free tie. Or buy any men's pair of shoes and get a free pair of socks. Traveling this summer? Buy any luggage set and get a free travel pouch. Visit us on Waterloo Street for more choices and better prices. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. You're still with News Update, welcome back. The City Council will be extending their cleanup campaign after an astounding success in ensuring the city remains clean and green in keeping with the President's Green State agenda. Kupini Jordan reports. Public Relations Officer of City Hall, Deborah Lewis, says the cleanup campaign will be extended to other communities. This followed the success of the initial cleanup campaign, which was launched in May. The campaign was convened in an effort to build better relationships with residents and business owners. We had a proportion of many vendors and many um, business owners who came forward and lent their support and we really worked with the I think the exercise was fruitful and successful. Lewis asked that residents give their full cooperation during the exercise as all tools necessary for the cleanup will be provided by the council. Looking at um, areas such as Atlantic Hill, we're looking at small areas, Lemahar Park, we're looking at Newton Kitty to have the same exercise that is being done right on Rock Summer and Gardens. But of course we have to meet with the residents and explain to them the whole process and to get their buy-in. Communities will be selected following an assessment carried out by the council. The initial campaign saw the cleanup of Lacey Town and Bordeaux from King Street to Albert Street running east to west and from South Road to Rob Street running north to south. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. The Ministry of Finance has provided to Cabinet a Treasury Memorandum which entails a number of discrepancies unearthed at the Public Accounts Committee during 2012 to 2014. Here are the details. Minister of Finance presented to Cabinet a Treasury Memorandum which responded to queries and recommendations in the report of the Public Accounts of Guyana. The reports correspond for the years 2012 to 
2013 and 2014 respectively. This was announced today by Minister of State Joseph Harmon at the post-cabinet briefing. Minister Harmon says the ministry has provided detailed responses for all ministries and regional administrations. Cabinet also noted the conclusions of the report which stated that there was excessive waste, abuse, and mismanagement of the public resources, as well as a lack of financial transparency, accountability, discipline, and full compliance with the FME Act, the Audit Act, and the Procurement Act. He noted that in 25 years, this is the first time a government has responded in detail to every query of the Public Accounts Committee. Harmon reiterated that his administration will not be keeping information hidden from the public. He said the government will be making information public as they become available. My understanding from persons who've actually served in that committee was that responses in the past were about two pages. This is about 10 or 12 pages detailing every single Ministry of Government, every regional democratic council, and departments also of the government. So that all of these detailed reports, and um, I believe it will be made public um, shortly enough, so that once it is laid in the National Assembly, then it will be a public document. And you'll be able to see the extent to which we have gone to answer these queries because we believe it is important to ensure that what we do is transparent and that the claims which were made hitherto by some persons who were in government before, that they are laid bare in this report. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. CARICOM on June 8 engaged stakeholders from across the region to consult on the ways in which they can make the CARICOM single market and economy more effective. Lashana Gomes, Canews reports. The Regional Stakeholders Consultation on the CARICOM Single Market and Economy is to help push for the necessary changes important to the development of the region. Secretary General of CARICOM, Irwin LaRock, says there is a need for more effort to be placed in addressing existing challenges in the CARICOM Single Market and Economy. We need to hear from you, the stakeholders, you are the commanders. The Secretary of the work that needs to get done. Put it in the states. But what is lacking is the demanders at the national level to do their part in terms of prioritizing what ought to be done. I want to say that we take too long to get things done in our community. There's some pieces of work that we've been doing since 2005, public procurement. We started that work prior to 2005, but now it's in 2004. Contingent rights. Started that in 2007. We still haven't completed that. And there are others along, along the way. And I challenge us to try to understand why does it take so long? Because there are so many vital parts of what we're trying to do in the future. I think the challenge before us today, and, and in relation to our member state representatives who are here, is to not come with national positions. But let's see what we can arrive with regional positions going forward. So we can make the rest of the recommendations, we go to the meet next week, special session, and on to the heads when they meet in special session. Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph Gonzalez, outlined some of the major areas within the CSME that sparks the need for urgent attention. We have to accept that the way globalization has proceeded that CARICOM is going to be an overarching integration mechanism with what the Europeans call, and I adopt the word, the formulation, a variable geometry of integration, different levels. For different folks. 
and that we are going to have Caribbean crisscrossing on a range of matters agreed upon. The Caracom single market and economy is responsible for providing a foundation for growth and development through the creation of a single economic space for the production of competitive goods and services. The two-day activity will engage a series of panels on the objectives and priority measures which should be taken for a more effective CSME. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. When we return, PNCR Commissioner assures accurate election results. Stay tuned. Eh, uh eh, -uh. BB is way going with so much Windex for clean windows. All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi, girl, mind your own business. I got big plans. But, BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh, hey, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home at Eccles. It named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind you business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. You hungry? Yeah. No, no. I'll make something for us. Spices. Oh, in the drawer. Wow, all these spices. Cardamom, cumin seeds. Yes. Cooking is now made easier with Indy's new line of spices. Even have smoked paprika. That and many more, all in convenient size bottles. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a daily million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the daily millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, Feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Are you building or renovating? Then Gaffers is the place to shop for all your construction needs. Our flat pack department has a wide range of doors, including wooden doors in pine, purple heart, crabwood, bifold, arch, full and half French, fiberglass garage doors, and Mexin steel doors. Our Mexin doors are durable, and they're available in a wide range of designs. For safety, our doors include 12 locks, viewers, buzzers, and frames. For your kitchen, we have a wide range of elegant and durable quartz, granite and laminated countertops, and cabinet doors. You'll find laminated, bamboo, and PVC flooring to suit your style and decor while upgrading the entire look and feel of any room. Then choose from our wide selection of PVC ceiling panels, ceiling tiles, moldings and rosettes. Also built in our flat pack department is sheeting for interior and exterior use such as plywood, gypsum board, cement board and MDF board. So come on down to Gafu's flat pack department for your construction and finishing needs and Miss Camlo will assist you to select products for your total satisfaction. Gafu's, the name you can trust. Looking for fresh meals, tasty pastries and bread? Then visit Pam and Steve Bakery at 127 4th Street in Stone Avenue, Campbellville. Come and enjoy our daily breakfast and lunch specials. Choose from our wide variety of delightful meals. For the Christmas holidays, place your order for our black sponge and fruitcakes. Be sure to drop by for our Sunday breakfast special, pepper pot and more. Opens every day except holidays. So next time you're in town, remember to visit Pam and Steve Bakery or call us on 226-5338. PNCR Commissioner Vincent Alexander is assuring the public that the dissemination of election results will be accurate as the Guyana Elections Commission has stringent measures in place for its tabulation process. Lashana Gomes-Canelius reports. 
ANCR Commissioner Vincent Alexander cited the transferring of election results to its final tabulation site as a major challenge during the elections period. He says in most cases abrupt interferences have been posed as a hindrance for such information to reach its final location. I think the point you need to bear in mind here is that when counting is done at the place of poll, immediately upon, upon completion of the counting, those results are posted at every yeah, polling, station. polling station across the country. So the result, in fact, though not accumulated, is in the public domain. And the issue we are faced with is the transmission of those results to the central place for uh, a tabulation as one, one, one result. And they are, in fact, uh, problems that, one, that we are faced with. Because let's take, for example, results coming from Kanashen. If the poll closes at 6 and the counting takes even an hour, there's no way you can get those results out that evening. You have to wait until the next day to fly them out. So they are serious logistical problems that can only be solved when the country has the kind of uh, technology to allow for transmission, even in the middle of the night. Alexander assured that accurate results will be made available to the public as the Guyana Elections Commission has a stringent process of documentation. The fact of the matter is the GCOM cannot release results on the basis of verbal communication over radio set. GCOM has to release results on the basis of documentation, which is uh, verified and certified by the relevant officials, including the political parties. So for us to transmit the result on radio, and to say this is the result will not meet the required standards of the declaration of results of elections. The country does not as yet have the infrastructure for the transmission from every part of the country using information technology. That's, that's the reality. In some parts of the country, the telephone still can't transmit. And I'm not advocating telephone transmission, but I'm just showing you the absence of the infrastructure for that kind of transmission. Local government elections is expected to be held in November. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The three new declared tongues will be given first priority for the provision of renewable energy. 30 solar farms will also be placed across Ghana in the next two years. More from Yana Sabrans. Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson says a number of tongues are on the car to receive renewable energy. Bartica will see the installation of a 1.5 megawatt solar farm with storage funded by the Interdevelopment Bank at a cost of 3.87 million U.S. dollars. We will be constructing a micro hydropower project of 1 megawatt at Ikira, B.C. Funding for this has been submitted, will be done under the GRIF funding, Guyana Green Plus Investment Fund. The cost being total investment cost is 5.22 million US dollars. The time frame for implementation is 2.5 years, two and a half years. And um, at, the, at the moment, there are Technical and economic assessments are being conducted at this site. Um, however, we, um, it was determined additional topographical surveys will be needed to conduct advanced assessment. Um, basically, we are, um, we, the, the, we are scoping. It will be a run of the river. Um, we are doing um, investigations into such things as the way the distribution line will go, run into to, to hook up to Bartico. Um, this, this falls is just below Bartico. Um, or just below or above, depending on which, which way you look at it. And it's one megawatt. And it is commenced in 2018. We have commenced studies, and we have two and a half years to completion. Another four locations is expected to benefit. A hydro project is expected for Tumatumari in Region 8. Tumatumari hydro project, which is 2.2 megawatts. Um, at the moment, the Tumatumari project is with a private, uh, it was with, it's a private developer, Chumachimari Bowling Inc. That was, um, they have pegged the total investment cost of 4.4 million. 
US dollars. It has been with them for a, quite a while. Um, we have, we have, um, they are, they are about, they, they said they are, they're about to do financial closure. We've given them up to the end of July 2018 to reach financial close with their investors. Should that be achieved, we already had, we've already um, started negotiating a heads of agreement with them and the heads of agreement goes like this. It's a 20 year, should they um, have financial close? It's a 20 year um, power purchase agreement. For the first five years, the cost will be 14 cents. For this next five years, it will be reduced to 12. And for the remaining um, 10 years, it will be um, 10 US cents per megawatt. Still ahead, Red Thread launches a domestic violence report. The whispers in the morning. Of lovers sleeping tight Are rolling by like thunder now As I look in your eyes I hold on to your Hey, hey darling, look at me again Where are you going? I thought you went to walk you go here. You know how long I want a smart TV? Hey, we, we go watch the cricket. Only MTV show in the cricket. Yes, you heard right. MTV Channel 14 Cable 65 secured the exclusive rights for Sri Lanka and Bangladesh tour of West Indies. So let's get ready again to rally around the West Indies. Catch the excitement as we bring you live ball-by-ball -ball coverage of Sri Lanka and Bangladesh tour of West Indies. Sri Lanka will take on West Indies in three test matches. First test on June 6 to 10 in Trinidad. Second test June 14 to 18 in St. Lucia. And third test June 23 to 27 in Barbados. The Super Tour continues when Bangladesh versus West West Indies thrills us with two test matches, three ODIs and three T20s. Take charge of this opportunity to maximize your business potential by securing your advertising spots for these remarkable matches. For more information, contact your advertising agency or our friendly marketing staff on 226-3593 or 2250569. Go with! How you pay for this TV? You hungry? Yeah. No, no. I'll make something for us. So many spices. Oh, in the jar. Wow, all these spices. Cardamom? Cumin seeds? Yes. in these new line of spices. And they even have smoked paprika. That and many more, all in convenient size bottles. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals.
this is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. As Red Thread launches its domestic violence report, it is hoped that the findings will provide leadership and transformative action in creating a protective environment for survivors. Yanis Abrams has that story. In their bid to improve the implementation of domestic violence laws, the Red Thread engaged five communities to unearth information on domestic violence. The report was facilitated over a two year period with funding from the U.S. Department of State. Red Thread Coordinator Karen D'Souza says the project was conceptualized in aiding changed communities' attitudes and perceptions about domestic violence. It is hoped that the report will provide leadership and transformative action in creating a protective environment against domestic violence. So the plan was, and, and, and this is what we executed, to identify um, women in the five communities in which the project was done, um, to be trained, to understand the law, to understand something about domestic violence, to challenge the I guess the, the, the common attitudes towards domestic violence, you all know those attitudes, blame the victim. You do something, that's why the man beating you up. Why didn't cook the man food on time? And so on and so on and so forth. Search yourself, that's another very popular um, retort in, in the face of domestic violence. Um, so so we had to, in the course of the training, we had to challenge the attitudes to domestic violence as well as to give information about the laws. Now we're talking about domestic violence, but we also have a major issue with sexual violence and sexual assault. So of course we could not ignore that. This is how things kind of grow, you know. So you, you can't pin yourself down to a little pocket because there's all this stuff out there. The project engaged residents in five communities, Pleasant, Better Hope, the Parfait Harmony, Bartica, Lethem, and Anna Regina. According to the report, majority of murder victims were said to be exposed by domestic violence. The Guyana Police Force has received and investigated over 2,000 domestic violence over the past five years. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. In their bid to promote environmental stewardship, the City Council launches the I Believe Clubs initiative at 12 primary schools. Here are the details. The Mayan City Council, backed by the Ministry of Education, on June 8 launched the I Believe Clubs for children at the primary level. The initiative is expected to promote leadership on environmental issues and cater for the overall well-being of the population. So says Mayor Patricia Chase Green. You will make us proud in moving this movement forward in the I Believe Club because you believe the change has come and change can take place. And you can be that change. For anything to change, it has to start with you. So it has to start with you. So literally, in school has to start with you. If you know you're drunk with you, you're going to start. You start with you, you got to start with you. If you know you throw in sweet paper on the ground, you gotta stop. It has to start with you. Teacher of St. Anne's Primary School, Shalon Simon, lauded the venture, pointing to the positives it will create for children. And apart from that, you know, it's helping our children basically to be responsible. Because, you know, sometimes we take the children for granted and say, no, they, they can't do this, they're too small. But no, I mean, we believe in empowering these children from a very young age. So when they get older, you know, they, you know they, it's already instilled in them that what they're supposed to do. The 12 schools will be paid impromptu visits from the council to ensure they are in keeping with the mandate of the project. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. The Indian Development Bank on June 8 engaged stakeholders on the importance of exponential technologies in small economies like Guyana. Nikhil Jondo reports. The Inter-American Development Bank on June 8 engaged stakeholders on the importance of exponential technologies in small economies like Guyana. IDB country representative Sophie McConan says the institution had engaged civil society in the Caribbean six years ago. That engagement focused on how the region, as a collective body, can find solutions to meet existing challenges of the region. 
As technology continues to advance, she says countries should take the opportunity to address challenges through this medium. Walking through here, you've all witnessed a glimpse of the vigor of the innovative efforts in technology in Guyana. And they are often, often we are not aware enough of them. For the IDB to work most effectively with our member countries to fulfill our development mission is to improve lives. It is critical to adapt to this rapidly evolving social and economic environment, as well as to take full advantage of it. Minister of Public Telecommunications, Catherine Hughes, reiterated that Guyana is moving apace with the advent of technology. However, there is a need for the private sector to catch up with the fast moving pace of the digital age. Private sector, you are going to be left behind also if we continue to do this the old way. So, I'm excited to remind you that technology can change all of this. And in Guyana, we're moving towards the 21st century government, where more services can be provided online. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Opposition leader Bart Jadio claims that, that the government is taking the energy sector for granted. Details in this report. Opposition leader Bart Jadio says the government does not have a definitive and significant path in handling the energy sector. He was at the time referring to the developing aspects of the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Jadio warns that recruiting of foreign consultants will prove detrimental for the country. And I saw the thing about where I study energy and, and, and someone really, I think I read in the newspapers, people question linkages. Not because a foreign company puts out a favorable report, a consultancy company, that we must all latch on to it. We have to question the motivation of these companies and particularly consultancies for oil and gas sector they would want to be favorable or put out reports favorable to oil companies because they get most of their business from oil companies so i, I want to caution about this it's all it's almost like kindergartenish this here the dpi sends it out oh the country should be satisfied we have a flow chart now none of the critical questions are asked here with that in mind, Jagdia urged the government to treat the complex energy sector in a more vigorous manner. It's, it's a complex issue. It has to deal with, like before, it's not only infrastructure and development projects. It's a whole ton of other things you have to ensure. Macroeconomic consistency. That is the, what happened to other con countries that caused them to, to lose. So. I'm not going to look at anything until I see a final draft before the National Assembly because they keep changing every week what they plan to do. On, on local content, we have seen their definition of local content. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Stay tuned for regional and international news, court round up as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Oh 
Ohio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Freddy, no me know the secret. Like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know the secret. <laughs> Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Having trouble with your vehicle and can't seem to find your spare parts? Then check out Caribbean Motor Spurs at 174 Zealot Public Road North, East Bank, Essequibo. We stock brands such as Tenacity, Johnson Products, JHF Filters, Coolmax Radiators with Warranty, and so much more. We also do orders for hard-to-find auto parts, so don't hesitate. Come in and meet our experienced and knowledgeable staff or call us on 609-7621 or 6304394 Here is what went down at the Georgia Magistrates Court on a Friday, June 8. Months after a pedal cyclist was killed in an accident along the Peters Hall Public Road, East Bank de Marara, by a speeding motor car, a 44-year-old businessman was on Friday charged for his death. Ramanand Jagdio, Section C, Golden Grove, East Bank de Marara, appeared before a principal magistrate Judy Latchman at the Georgetown Magistrates Court and denied the cause of death by dangerous driving charge. Particulars of the charge alleged that on February 22, 2018, at Peters Hall Public Road, he drove motor car PRR4395 in a dangerous manner which resulted in the death of Alexander Appia. Police prosecutor Arvin Moore, on the day in question, about 21 hours, Jack Deer was allegedly speeding along the Peters Hall Public Road in motor car PRR4395 when Appia, a pedal cyclist, was riding in the eastern lane. It is alleged that Jagdio swerved in front of the pedal cyclist and collided with him. Due to the force of the impact of the collision, the left leg of Appiah was severed from his body and fell into the road surface. He was picked up and rushed to the Georgetown Public Hospital where he was pronounced dead upon arrival. Moore made no objection to Jagdio being released on bail. Magistrate Latchman released Jack Dio on $1 million bail and transferred the matter to the chief magistrate for June 19. In another matter, an ex-police officer was charged before senior magistrate Leron Daly for breaking enter with larceny and assaulting another police officer. Imran Khan, 25, of Westminster, La Parafate Harmony, West Bank, Damarara, denied the two charges. The first charge alleged that on May 22, 2018 at Independence Boulevard, in the company of another, he broke and entered the home of Natasha Hamchand and stole over $1,336,000 worth in items. It is further alleged that on May 26 at Sandy Bab Street, Kitty, he assaulted police corporal Mark Moses, who was acting in execution of his duties. Last Friday, another accused guy, Edmondson, was also charged before Magistrate Daly for the break and enter charge. He was released on $80,000 bail. According to reports, Hamchand is a mutual friend of Imran Khan, who is a policeman who brought Edmondson to her home for some items she had for sale. On May 22, the businesswoman and the two men were helping her take some boxes into her home. The two men went into the home before her. 
Edmondson, however, indicated to her that someone broke into her home. The men reportedly helped the woman to look for the alleged thief. When the two men left, the neighbors told her that they saw Edmondson and Can in the yard with a bag when she was not at home on the same day. The magistrate released Can on a total of $130,000 bail and adjourned the matter until July 6. And finally, former finance minister under the People's Progressive Party administration, Dr. Ashni Singh, and former National Industrial and Commercial Investment Limited, Nisil, Chief Executive Officer, CEO, Winston Brassington, were Friday slapped with a charge for misconduct in public office contrary to the public law. However, the men did not appear before Acting Chief Magistrate Sherdell Isaacs Marcus. The matter has been adjourned until June 29. Soko Prosecutor Lawrence Harris explained that the matter was filed on Thursday, June 7. However, he begged for an adjournment for the two defendants to be present in court to answer to the charges. The duo was charged and granted bail in the sum of $6 million each for misconduct in public office on May 9, 2018. The last allegation against the two stated that Dr. Ashney Singh and Brassington on December 28, 2009 at 126 Barrack Street, Kingston, Georgetown, by way of agreement of sale and purchase, acted recklessly when they sold to National Hardware Guyana Limited, a tract of land at Plantation Lilliendal, Pattinson, and Turkine, situated on the east coast of Demerara, being 103 acres, being property of the state of Guyana for the sum of $598,659,398, VAT inclusive, without first having procured a valuation of the said property from a competent valuation officer. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. The Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 776. Let's turn our attention to the Demerara Harbor Bridge schedule. Rajesh Lakhan has your weekly entertainment guide next. Stay with us. What good is history if you never change? And what good is change if it doesn't make you better? At Valvoline, for the last 150 years, we've been doing just that. Relentlessly pursuing innovation for your engine backed up not just by science, but by the hands-on expertise that drives everything we do. Valvoline, 150 years under the hood. You hungry? Yeah. No, no, I'll make something for us. So where are the spices? Oh, in the drawer. Wow, all these spices! Cardamom? Cumin seeds? Yes. Cooking is now made easier with Indy's new line of spices. And they even have smoked paprika. That and many more, all in convenient size bottles.
Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague, ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. Slimjet presenting Coleomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at Slimjet, City Mall, second floor. Gaffools proudly presents the perfect block. Made by the most technologically advanced concrete block making machine in sizes 4 and 6 inches. Perfect because it's the right ratio of cement and sand with sifting added for greater strength. It's stress tested independently by the UG Civil Engineering Department and it's cured for longer life. It's now available at a lower price with a 12.5% discount. The perfect block from Gafools setting a new benchmark. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. KTP, just for you, baby. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of MTV News Update Entertainment Guide. We begin with Two of a Kind, that's the name of the comedy show, slated for next Sunday, that's Father's Day at the Marriott Hotel. I spoke with the director, Jem Madhu, out of Jem's theater production, who told us about the show. Well, the show, first of all, is called Two of a Kind. Mm -hmm. And the reason for Two of a Kind is because there are two brothers performing in it. And for the first time in Guyana, those two brothers will be performing. And that is Paul Keynes Douglas and Ricardo Keynes Douglas. Both of them are famous Caribbean storytellers. Both of them are versatile stage performance. And they are, accost they are accompanied by Farida Chapman, who is from the Talk Tent in Trinidad, and Avion Crooks. She's also from the Talk Tent. Our own Lisa Singh will be on stage also. Oh, famous and, comedian. Yes. <laughs> Always call things by the rightful name. This is why we don't have good mathematicians, because of poor toilet training. Tell the baby, we're doing number one. <laughs> then the baby doing number two. Then tell the baby, point when you want it, two, two. <laughs> so baby think we got metric, no, point, two, two. So they're very hilarious. It's, a, it's an evening of laughter and fun and all of that. And so I hadn't done it for so many years, and I thought, okay, I always wanted to do a production of the Marriott since it was built. And I said, okay, I'll give it a kick, kick off by bringing them down. The, the show will be about two hours long. It's a full, full length show. Um, there's one at five o'clock, and there's one at eight o'clock. And the five o'clock show, I'm trying to encourage families with children to come to it, and as such, I'm charging $3,500. But the 8 o'clock show, I'm charging 5000 So I've reduced the price for the first one. It's very clean family entertainment, and you can bring your children and just relax and have a good time. And as we continue with the entertainment guide, I'm here with newly crowned Miss Ghana World, Ambika Ramaraj. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Tell us, how has it has been since you won the crown? It's been pretty good. We've actually uh, just recently started training in certain areas, and we're going to actually go deeper into that as time goes on. Were you surprised yeah. when you heard your name or something that you expected? I was surprised. I mean, I, I don't think I was prepared to hear, my, hear the first round of name being called and then me being the last person standing mm -hmm. and, you know, getting that crown at that mo moment in time. But I am so grateful for it all regardless. At this point, I'm moving forward into the Miss World pageant. What are some of the areas you think you got to work on to up your game? <laughs> well, I think I need to work on every area. Um, you know, you're not 
at, at this point in time, you're not going to be at your best. Mm -hmm. So you have to continue developing yourself in every area. So I have to do more work on top model. My talent needs a lot of work as well. Sports and fitness. Well, sports and fitness is something very close to me. So that is probably my best area right now. But of course, I'm still going to try to be better at that too. Uh, what are you doing for your talent piece? For my talent piece, I'm going to be doing dance. <laughs> I have a voice that will empower men, women, and children, anyone who has ever felt lost like I had felt, anyone who needed someone there with them like I did. I will be the voice for our people. I will be the voice to make a change in our world. Great, and tell us about the Beauty with a Purpose project. My Beauty with a Purpose is using sports and physical activity mm -hmm. to help individuals cope with mental health issues and to prevent mental health issues from occurring in some individuals. Now you will be competing with so many beautiful young ladies such as yourself. You started, you started your background check and, and see which one of those countries you might get off time with? I'm, <laughs> I'm actually, like this morning I went through <laughs> some of the photos of some of the girls that would have already been selected to represent their countries mm -hmm. but I'm not making comparisons right now right now my focus is to be better than the person I was just a day ago so right now my competition is myself to always be better than who I am <laughs> just a few minutes ago or just a day ago <laughs> or so and how confident are you going to the international stage? I'm confident that I will work my hardest and I will give my all to representing my country on the international scale. Tell us some of the activities um, you have before you head to the international stage. Okay, well firstly, I want to touch base with my region. I was the representative for region number four during the local leg of the pageant, so I definitely want to start there. I actually want to do some, some things to get people active, so I want to do a dance, like a Zumba class, where okay. anybody from the public can come out and participate. I want to get some youth involved in some sports, you know, go to schools, find out who has an interest in any specific sport and see what role I can play to get them to start that. And yeah, more competitions, more sports competitions to get people out and get people active and, you know, have them challenge themselves physically and also mentally. And so, how soon you start in these um, activities? Well, they're currently in the planning, so hopefully by later this month I will be able to start a lot of my um, Beauty with a Purpose projects. After I finish with Region 4, or I can't even say finish because this rain continues for a year, <laughs> so I have so much work to do. But after getting as much as I can done in Region 4, I li I'd like to go over to some other regions and ha reach out to them as well and get them more involved in sports too. And you will post the dates and updates on social media? Yes, yeah, social media will have everything. <laughs> Great. Any final word like I can say to the viewers? Oh, um, Actually, I would just like to send a thank you out there to everyone who is supporting me. And that's all we have for you in this week's edition of MTV News Update Entertainment Guide. As always, I'm Rajesh Lakan. encourage you to have fun and be safe. That's all we have for you in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. ExxonMobil publishes a second list of contractors. Government responds to hike in fuel prices. City Council extends a cleanup campaign. And in court, a businessman released on bail for causing death by dangerous driving. Remember to join us online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours 30 on Saturday, June 9. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I am Ashley Scotland. Thank you for watching. Good night.